Albertine Grabin, which has eight districts, has uh, approximately 704,000 goats. The unfortunate thing is that most of the farms um, approximating up to 80% lack appropriate houses for the goats. Accommodation is very, very important for the goats. Not only the young goats, kids, the growers, uh, or the adult goats, but across all the age groups, the house protect the goats against adverse environmental uh, situations, extreme cold, extreme temperature, high temperature, um, and also uh, from predators, goats are protected by the houses. And also from, from uh, some diseases, goats' houses where um, the platforms separate the wastes from the goats helps in minimizing diseases, especially parasitic diseases. Three things that are considered when constructing uh, houses for goats. Consider the location, consider the designs, and consider the materials. So in terms of location, Every goat farmer must construct goat houses or goat house in well-trained areas of the grazing land. Areas which are not too close to passing roads. Areas which are strategic where one can observe what is happening at the uh, at, uh, at the houses. Those areas are very good for locating good houses. And the nature of the soil, uh, soil that can support uh, the weight of the good houses, very, very important. In terms of uh, the design, there are several designs of uh, good um, Houses. There are some houses that are aerial, that are built to have aerial designs, where the floors are made up of uh, 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 raised platforms, which permit separation of dung and urine, and the court remains clean. Those designs are very, very important because as opposed to the ground houses, they enhance sanitation and prevent uh, occurrence, or they minimize occurrence of uh, sanitation-related diseases. Um, the wastes such as urine, can evaporate and irritate the respiratory system and the eyes of the gods. So if urine gets separated uh, from the gods, it filters through the porous platforms, gods remain comfortable. The feeding of gods is a very important factor that affects their performance. It is important to note that feeding constitutes 60% of the total cost of livestock production. We feed these goats so as to provide nutrients uh, for the animal's body to enhance the development, growth, maintenance, and reproduction. And these nutrients, we categorize them into mainly five. We have the carbohydrates, the prote proteins, the minerals, vitamins, and water, they all must be given in 
well balanced quantities for these goats so that they're able to perform. And nutrients are a substance supplied by the feedstuffs used by the animals for maintenance and production. And these feedstuffs that are fed to the animals, we mainly categorize them into two. We have the roughages and the concentrates. Under the roughages, that's where we find our natural pastures. Then we also have the cultivated fodder crops and uh, the crop residues. Then the concentrates, that's where we find the cereal brands, the pulse brands, and all these constitute the different feedstuff that can be fed to our goods. In Uganda, we have two seasons, the wet season and the dry season. And in the wet season, there is always plenty of pastures for the goats, even in the natural grazing lands. Unlike during the dry season, especially during the adverse conditions, where you find there is a lot of scarcity. And during this period, we see a lot of malnutrition, which is exhibited in the animals to approximately 40 to 50%. As Bulindi, we have come up with feeding technologies, uh, especially feed conservation technologies and supplementation of our goats to minimize the malnutrition cases among us, the goats. And the feed conservation technologies we have on farm, we have the hay making, we have silage making, and we do supplement our goats with cut and carry of fresh napier grass and the leguminous shrubs. The introduction and promotion of these highly nutritious and high producing fodder crops was mainly to ensure all year round feed availability for the goats so as to enhance their performance. And we are focusing on promoting the narrow napier one because of its attributes, the high yields or the high biomass. And it is not hairy, meaning it's easily workable with. And it is also able to give us about 40 tons per hectare of uh, biomass per year.